and this week we are taking a look at the Nintendo Wii U. Now, I kind of, I've kind of been around with the Wii U for the last ten years. Ten years of owning that system, enjoying it, playing it, blah blah blah. I supported that thing through pretty much every single major release. Every single one. Um, it was my first console that I took to university. I got it in the Christmas of uh, 2020. Oh no, tw God. 2013. Christmas 2013, I had purchased three Wii U games by this point. It came out in 2012, because of course it did. And it had a not great shelf life of about five years. And then Nintendo kind of went, I'm going to phase out the Wii U, and we're going to bring in probably our single most successful console of all time in the form of the Switch. Um, so I've kind of, prior to this, I've been strictly Xbox, strictly 360, strictly all of that. I even bought into the Xbox One hype for a while, and you want the God's honest truth? I haven't looked back at Xbox since. I haven't been swayed by PlayStation since I made the switch to Nintendo, and a big part of that was the Wii U. I think I even had a um, yeah, I did. I bought a DS. I bought a 3DS around, uh, well, a 2DS around the time because I was just so kind of weirdly enamoured with what Nintendo were doing. It was different, and it felt more like owning and playing video games than anything Microsoft was fucking doing with the Xbox piece of shit. Well. Hell, they even released a multi-tap for the bloody system to use with, of course, Super Smash Bros. for Wii U and 3DS. I know, it's it's just Smash 4. Nobody talks about Smash 4. So, we haven't done a collection video in a while. We haven't done a massive sodding look at an entire games collection that I happen to have. Um, I think we did the Switch a couple of months ago. Uh, that was fun. It was fun, if you haven't seen, well, we might have done the Switch. No, we didn't do the Switch. We didn't do the Switch. We did the limited run one a couple weeks ago. That had a bunch of Switch games in it. I will do a Switch one, um, if, if that's something you're interested in. Let me know. But we're doing probably one of my absolute favorite consoles of all time. One I have recently traded in a couple of games away from, which I'm regretting. Um, those are Project Zero Made in the Blackwater. I got rid of that two years ago after owning it for five or six years without actually ever playing the fucking thing because I don't play horror games. So, pointless owning it. And the other one, unfortunately, was um, Twilight Princess. I got Twilight Princess again on GameCube this year. I played it, I thought it was dreadful, and I got rid of it. Um, I am planning to pick it up again for Wii U because I hear they've fixed a f they fixed a few things that I found irritating with the game uh, when I played it on GameCube. So here we are. But starting off, uh, we are just going by ones I've grabbed. Splinter Cell Blacklist uh, in a really crappy looking ugly case that I will replace by stealing it from CEX. I'm kidding. I've never done that. Um, not a terrible game, but not one I've actually sat down and played kind of of that period where the Wii U had tangential third-party support. You had games coming out almost as half-assed ports and they fucking sucked. <laughs> they fucking sucked and I think that's a shame. But there were some decent, there were some good third-party support um, games for the Wii U. For example, Epic Mickey, The Power of Two. Um, Oh, Epic Mickey 2, The Power of Two. Kind of an immersive sim. An immersive sim using Mickey Mouse, a magic paintbrush, and featuring Oswald the Rabbit for the first time in about nearly 70 years by that point. Yeah. <laughs> long, long time away from Disney, and you know what? Solid game. Very solid game. Beautifully solid game, but unfortunately not... Not amazing. Um, or didn't sell very well. Kind of killed the series. Um, I don't have the 3DS game. I don't really want to because it 
that's not great. But yeah. Avengers Battle for Earth. This was a Connect game. And it was dreadful on Connect. You want the truth? It's pretty solid on Wii U, actually. If if you if you're gonna get a Wii U, buy this. Buy this, play it. Um it's not perfect because it's 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 a connect game. Who the fuck plays connect anymore? I only plug that thing out of I only plug in that thing when I'm using 360 on a whim, and it's mostly to control the Xbox 360 with my voice. Which is pretty cool. Now, Nintendo's most popular Mario Kart started life on the Wii U. And this thing has had a shelf life for nearly 10 years. It has been 10 years since the last full console release of a Mario Kart game. That is baffling. Now, don't get me wrong, I quite like Mario Kart 8. It's not my favourite one. It, weirdly enough, doesn't feel particularly fast, even when you're playing on the fastest skill. It almost feels like it's too slow. And my favourite is Double Dash. Double Dash is a beautiful game. But to be fair, I also liked Mario Kart DS. Let me find that again. That game was good. But if you're going to play Mario Kart 8, don't play it on Wii U. And I don't mean that in a horrible way. I don't mean it as the Wii U is an inferior system to the Switch. In a lot of ways, I like it more. Um, in a lot of ways, I don't. But Mario Kart 8, the best way to play it nowadays, is, is on the Switch. Plus, that thing is still not cheap. It's why I haven't bought it again. Um, a game I didn't really get into, but I wanted to. I wanted to get into this. did not know that this had an equivalent version of multiplayer using a Game Boy Advance on the GameCube. Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate. Now, if you remember, Monster Hunter Tri was a sort of Wii exclusive for a long time, and then they kind of... I don't know much about Monster Hunter. Um, I know it's quite grindy. Um, which doesn't really tickle my fancy. But the idea that you can use, th like, three local 3DS players can plug into this and play it via local wireless. Not Wi-Fi, wireless. Local play. That's pretty fucking cool. <laughs> That's pretty fucking cool. I might have to track down how you... I might have to figure out how you do that if it's not in here which it isn't it's on the electric manual but I haven't played this game in a very long time and that would be very sick I just need um I'm planning on getting a second 3ds at some point strictly so I can do I can do local play of um of fire emblem because I think it will be funny but yeah, that's that's interesting. That's super interesting. I'm very, very on board with that. But moving on. Um, not a huge fan of Monster Hunter. Never really have been. But I've got the game, so screw it. Minecraft Wii U Edition. Featuring the Super, Sm super Mario Mashup. It's just Minecraft. It's, it's, it's the same game we've been playing since, like, 2009. It, it's fine. It's fine. To be fair, the Mario theme world is is pretty cool to explore, and the fact that you can play it off off TV is is also very welcome. But yeah, other than that, it, it's just kind of a book. I think I found that in a charity shop for like fifty p, and then I sold it at CEX for like ten quid, and then I bought it again way down the line when it was like two or three pounds again. It's fine. It's not great. Much like Wii U Party, or Wii Party U. I wasn't a huge fan of of Mario of 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 most of the Wii games. Wii Sports was an ex uh, was an exception to that. I don't actually have Wii Sports Club. That's something I've been 
debating on for a, a, a very long time. It's one of the few games on the Wii U I don't actually own as first party. Um, that that, and, of course, Twilight Princess, because I got rid of it, because I'm a very stupid man. And it was the limited release as well. But Wii Party U is <laughs> fine. It, it's it's not great. The fact that there are six games you can just play with the gamepad on a, on a, on a table, that's pretty cool. In a lot of ways, the Wii U gamepad is a proto-Switch. And in a lot of ways, they also use it better than the Switch. Um, or at least in ways that were more interesting. But, yeah. It, it's kind of of that era where Nintendo were experimenting with stuff, and nowadays they aren't quite as much. But moving on. Kirby and the Rainbow Paintbrush. I have played this game once. <laughs> yeah, I've played it once, and it was fine. It was okay. It's not a game I personally would play again, which is fine. Um, it it's fine. I'm I'm not I'm not a huge Kirby fan. I've I've only really owned about four, about four Kirby games in my time. Maybe five or six. Um, Kirby Battle Royale, Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland, Kirby in the Forgotten Land, which was a pretty good game, um, but is completely forgettable once you finished it. Kirby in the Rainbow Paint Rush, and I think Kirby Superstar Ultra, but I could be wrong on that. I'm not a big Kirby fan. Nothing's ever really got me into Kirby as much as I like him in Smash. He's my wife's favourite with the fucking down B all the time. Just yeah, not ideal. Darksiders! Ooh. <laughs> um, I'm not a big Darksiders fan, either. Um, bought my wife the sword for war a while ago, um, earlier this year, just kind of as a thank you present for putting up with some of my idiosyncrasies. But, yeah, um, not a big Darksiders fan. I've tried to get into it over the last... 13 years of its existence, and I haven't really been able to. I got a good chunk of the way into two, I th uh, into one, I thought one was good. Then two came along and tried to be Skyrim, and it, it didn't work for me. I, I found it more irritating and tedious. I finished the first world and I got to the end, and I was like, yeah, I'm bored. I'm bored shitless, I'm moving on. I played a bit of three, I got a good chunk of the way into three. And then I hit a bullshit boss fight, and I was like, you know what? I don't really enjoy games that are based on Dark Siders. Sorry, that are based on Dark Souls. And yeah, then Dark Siders Genesis. We played like my wife and I maybe for like an hour before I went. You know, I don't like games based on Diablo. Pick an identity, Dark Siders. Just pick one. That'd be nice if we ever get a fourth game. We'll <laughs> see. Moving on. Uh, the only game. The Retro Studios did, in between, well, one of two. I think Retro did this. Nope, just me being crazy. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. It's just a fairly standard side-scrolling platformer, which, if you like Donkey Kong, you'll enjoy. I don't. But what does strike me is, it's been nine years since that game came out. Nine years. Since we last had a Donkey Kong Country game. Ain't great for people who like Donkey Kong. To be fair, the same could be said for people who really like Kid Icarus. The same could be said for people who really like Star Fox. <laughs> and the same could be said for people who really enjoy F-Zero. Up until this year with F-Zero 99, so GG. But yeah. Pull your finger out your ass. Art Atlia. Um, or Art Academy Alia. It was five quid. <laughs> it was five pounds. It's fine. It's not great. I don't play it. I just own it because screw it. Nintendo Land. Now, Nintendo Land had some interesting ideas. Stuff like Pikmin Adventure, Legend of Zelda Battle Quest, um, Mario Chase. A Metroid game on yet another system with no Metroid game on it. Why do they keep doing that? But, um, now I'm not a Metroid fan. But my point still stands. We got, like, 
this has the last cap the official last official Captain Falcon thing in it. That sucks. <laughs> that sucks. Um, I like Nintendo Land. I think it's I think it's really good. It it's a game you can only play on the Wii U nowadays. It's it's the only place you can play it. Nintendo haven't ported it to the Switch yet, or will they? Fuck knows. Um, I mean, I like the Switch. Um, I haven't really bought into the Wii releases because I've got me to the game. So it really took some oomph to get me to buy any of them. I think I've bought two. And we'll get to those. Um, a game you will not find around too much if you live in America. Devil's Third. This game is awful. <laughs> it is... One of the single worst third-person shooters I have ever played. It is a horrible game. But I fucking love it. <laughs> I love its stupid character design. I love its ridiculous story. I love its dreadful, dreadful characters. It's dreadful multiplayer. Like, you had some interesting concepts for its multiplayer, like build a clan, build a base, join a clan, build a base, large-scale tactical warfare, some really interesting shit, but they released it on the Wii U. With its 14 million consoles sold total. Period. Not great. Um, so yeah, uh, especially in America, that game is fucking expensive. <laughs> That game is fucking expensive because it did not launch over there. Not properly. It had, like, maybe... It had an extremely limited release. I mean, I bought this for the equivalent of, like, 30 bucks. Maybe more like 50 bucks. 50 bucks. New. It was 30 quid new. Which is... Should scream the quality that we're looking at there. Real ass budget title. And you know what? Not a good one. That in a minute. Moving on. Rayman Legends. Now, this was originally a Wii U exclusive. And in a lot of ways, it shows. It shows that it's a Wii U exclusive because of how you use the gamepad in a lot of the kind of multiplayer modes. And that's awesome. And it's sick. And I wish Ubisoft would make a new fucking Rayman game because that was the last one. And that came out in 2014. 2013. This game is 10 years old. And you will not see another Rayman game. I argue for a very long time because Rabbids still sells somehow. Rayman doesn't. And that sucks. Um, I think they kind of saw the wh they saw where the wind was blowing with the Wii U, so they were like, right, it's uh, not an exclusive anymore, it's being published on all systems, blah blah blah, so they had to, they delayed it by a year. Speaking of rabbits, Rabbids Land, um, it's a shit Mario Party claim. Not a fun one, it's, it's, it's not a fun one. It's a bad one, it's a very bad one. There are better platformers, however, or there are better games on there, such as Yoshi's Woolly World. This game, once again, very easy, very okay. Very Kirby's Epic Yarn. I don't really know what it is with Nintendo in this period, just making, like, wool-based wool -based platformers for its, for its um, two kid properties, two more child-friendly properties, but very weird. Now, we didn't get any Fire Emblem on this particular system, which is a shame. Instead, we were going to get Shin Megami Tensei X Fire Emblem. We were going to get a game that was crossing over Shin Megami Tensei and Fire Emblem. Now, around this time, I dabbled in Fire Emblem. I played Awakening. I thought it was really good. And I'd also sold my 2DS by this point, so I couldn't play it anymore. So I was a little bit, a little bit excited when Tokyo Mirage Sessions hashtag FE came out. Only to find it's really not my cup of tea. It's less Fire Emblem, more Persona. 
and I don't like JRPGs. I don't. This is not for me. Um, I think it's pretty. It's certainly pretty. It's a pretty designed game, but it's really boring. And and the real kicker is this and another and another game that's about to follow were the last two full priced Wii U games I ever purchased. And what a letdown they both were. Because one of those, that final game, that final major Wii U release from Nintendo was Breath of the Wild. And I'm going to be brutally honest with you, up until Atomic Heart this year, I've never gone from liking a game to hating it as quickly. It took 20 minutes. It took 20 minutes of me f facing that God awful mechanic of, oh, we're going to break your weapons every 30 seconds. I don't want that. I don't want you to break my weapons every 30 seconds. I want you to make them last longer than 20 hits. Nintendo, I want you to give me a game where it feels like I'm engaging with the world or have the ability to repair the fucking weaponry I'm using. And you want the God's honest truth? I fucking hated, I fucking hate Breath of the Wild. I do. I, I hate it. To the point where it put me off buying Tears of the Kingdom this year. So you will not be seeing that. because I'm going to be doing a game of the year list um, or top five games of the year. Which for me is going to be a difficult one this year because there have not been a lot of things I've played that I've liked. So, um, but that will be, that'll be a lot later. Um, it'll probably be beginning of next year, along with a game room tour video, because there have been some significant changes. But, stick around for that. I think it's a shame, because I, I really like Zelda. Wind Waker HD, specifically. I think this is singularly the best Zelda game I've ever played a substantial amount of. Like, I tried playing Twilight Princess, I didn't like it. I've tried playing Ocarina of Time, I didn't like it. I couldn't even get five minutes into Skyward Sword. That game is dreadful. This, though, this I've nearly finished. And for me, with a fucking Zelda game, that's difficult. Because I'm not a Zelda fan. My favourite fucking Zelda game isn't even, isn't even Wind Waker. It's Four Swords Adventures on the GameCube. Like, that should scream reams. That should scream reams of my tastes in games. I'm just not a Zelda fan. I never have been. I highly, highly doubt I ever will be. I think they would really severely have to remove the weapon degradation in a future in a future Zelda so I want me to even consider touching it. When they went, oh yeah, it's still there. I was like, cool. I'm not buying. I'm not buying fucking Tears of the Kingdom. Then I'm done. I'm good. I, I got enough of that shit playing fucking Breath of the fucking Wild. And I know the point is to engage your imagination and utilise the tools to your effectiveness, but sometimes you kind of hit the wall of, well, I could use these weapons to fight a Bokoblin outpost and fight some enemies. Or I could not do that and not waste all the weapons that I've spent forever collecting because then you run into the situation where you're trying to find a cache of them out in the Gerudo Desert and you get killed by a guardian and at that point you swear off fucking Breath of the Wild forever. And I haven't played it since and that has been five years. <laughs> it's been five years since I last played Breath of the Wild because I just hated it that much. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. As I said earlier... Kind of crappy third-party support for the Wii U. It was really its biggest weakness. Especially with games like Watch Dogs. Now, here's the thing. I like Watch Dogs. Specifically, I like how it works on the Wii U. Because you've got the interactive map. And you can... Yeah. Like, it's got off-screen TV, which I'm always on board with. It's just a... It's a solid port. It was delayed like crazy. Um, but it was good. Another good way to play um, a fairly good game from the beginning of the two thousand, uh, from the beginning of the twenty tens, Deus Ex: Human Revolution Director's Cut. Very, very solid, very solid game. Like very solid 
everything. New Game Plus, Expanded Arsenal, includes both of the missions like that were exclusive DLC. Hacking directly on the Wii U gamepad, it uses the gamepad in a way that's interesting and integrates into the game extremely well. It, hell, I, if anyone said to me, how should I play Human Revolution and they don't have a PC, play on Wii U. Play on Wii U, you've got the whole package right there and it's like three pounds at most. So not bad. Uh, I'll just skim through these next ones because they're not particularly interesting. Uh, Angry Birds Star Wars, not great because it's fucking Angry Birds. That franchise died out ages ago. Lego Batman, Lego Jurassic World, Lego Movie, the video game. Batman 3, Lego Batman 3 Beyond Gotham. Perfectly fine games. Um, I think they're good. Not my cup of tea, never been a huge Lego fan. Um, and Lego Dimensions, which, yeah, I bought into. Um, I own the Chell and the Portal lineup, and I... Where is it? Up there. I'll be able to just see it. Lego Dimensions Sonic! Yeah, um, I didn't buy too much into Lego Dimensions. Uh, if anything, I'd say play it on PS4. Because at least you can still download and play the f fucking Sonic one. But, yeah. Uh, not bad game. Fine. I, I haven't played it a whole lot. But yeah. The last two Pac-Man platformers. Pac-Man the Ghostly Adventures 1. Pac-Man the Ghostly Adventures 2. You'd be surprised how fucking expensive this was. <laughs> it was like 30 quid. And it's based on the animated show where Pac-Man's a teenager, which is fucking bizarre. Really fucking bizarre. Completely insane. But you know what? Two very solid, two very solid games. Um, real pity they removed the multiplayer from this, at, um, for this one. I think that's kind of sucky, but I kind of get why. Bit of a pain. Not bad platformers, though. Mario Tennis Ultra Smash. I'm not a Mario Tennis guy. Um, I'm not really a Mario sports guy, but you know what? It was there. It came with a free sweatband, of all things. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Bought that new. Ah, now. Captain Toad Treasure Tracker was a delightful little... Surprise, um, it's cheap as chips, it's on, uh, it's on the Switch. I'd actually argue it's more fun to play on the Wii U because it uses everything that the Wii U gamepad is. It uses everything with that big old clunky, um, controller. You know, I don't know where my Wii U is. It's hidden somewhere, I have to track that down. I think it's on top of the game's shelf over there. But yeah. Camto Treasure Tracker. Um, short. Has some integration with um, Super Mario 3D World. If you have a save file for Super Mario 3D World, it unlocks levels in Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. And you know what? They're awesome. And more of that game is always a pleasure. It's just such a good game. Now, Platinum. Platinum had a... Platinum Games, uh, makers of Metal Gear Rising, Revengeance, um, Anarchy Reigns, if anybody remembers that, Vanquish Bayonetta, blah, blah, blah. Had a big hand in the Wii U. Weirdly enough, it might explain their current financial situation, but we got stuff like Wonderful 101, which is wonderful. It's all kinds of crazy. It's all kinds of insane. You control like 100 people at once, or 101. Uh, 101 people at once forming, like, just an entire army of characters. They re-released that on pretty much every major system recently. I don't know how it plays on those uh, in this. You use the gamepad to kind of draw um, the different icons or the different... Um, yeah, to switch between, like, the major... F nine? Ten? Major like ten characters you have like neon red uh, like wonderful red wonderful white wonderful blue that kind of stuff insane game full of 
full of platinum charm, and you know what? Just go fucking play it. So, yeah. Now, for those of you who don't remember, Luigi had his own year, and he got two games out of it. He got you got Super Luigi U, which is pretty solid actually, quite quite a good game. And he got Doctor Luigi. I like Doctor Luigi. I think it's really fun. I think it's a lot. I think it's a real delight. But yeah, solid platformer. Year of Luigi, his thirtieth anniversary. Coming up to his fortieth anniversary. <laughs> but yeah. Super Mario Maker. Now, I do have two copies of this, uh, so I'll, I'll save that for the end, but good game. Paper Mario Color Splash. One of the other last major releases uh, for the Wii U from Nintendo. Don't like this game. Um, and a big part of it is actually it's turn-based combat. I, I can't do... I can't do menu-based, turn-based combat. I, I can do it with... Act I can do it with tactical RPGs. I can do that easy. Because there's an element of strategy. With that, it's press button to do thing. I'd rather... Or press button to go into menu to do thing. Which I'd rather cut out the middleman and just press button to do thing. If you know what I mean. Boring. Really didn't like it. Moving on. Arkham City. Um, Armored Edition. Very good. Very good. Very good game. Um, whole bunch. Well, pretty much all the release DLC. Um, unique modes. Unique this. Unique that. Very solid game. And you know what? We're getting all that exclusive content with the new um, Arkham Trilogy, which is launching on Switch. Very soon. If not, has already. But yeah. Uh, good solid game. Um, Mario and Sonic at the Sochi Owen. Uh, 2014 Olympic Winter Games. I don't really buy into games like this. This is the only Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games title I own because uh, it was kind. Of, it was one of uh, three exclusive games that Sega had for the Wii U. Sonic games. Exclusive Sonic games. The other ones were, of course, Lost World, which is a slightly worse version of Mario Galaxy. By slightly, I mean substantially. Um, <coughs> and the real unfortunate kicker is, this is the Deadly Six Edition, which has an exclusive level featuring the Deadly Six, who Sega pushed... Real hard as major antagonists right up until um, Sonic Forces in 2017. And that game sucked. <laughs> that game was terrible. I mean, those characters are dreadful. They're boring. They, they're so cliche in all the worst possible ways. And they're still being shoved down our throats. Sod off. Unfortunately, the only other major Sonic game on that console was fucking Rise of Lyric with Sonic Boom. Here's the kicker. I don't hate this. I think it's dreadful. But I don't think it's terrible. I don't think it's as bad as 06. It's certainly not as unplayable. That game is... Like, I've snapped about three different copies of Sonic 06 in half. There are substantially less versions of Sonic 06 in the world because I've actively destroyed them out of just pure rage. Sonic Boom, I've never even considered taking out the uh, considered taking out the system and throwing it across the room in, in a fit of anger. I think it's just broken in in a way that's irritating, but not, certainly not as dreadful as everyone makes out to be. Luckily, we did get a good Sonic game on the Wii U. Sonic and Sega All Stars Racing Transformed. Love this game. It was the closest we ever got to a HD Panzer Dragoon level. And you know what? Oh, welcome for it. Game and Wario. I'm not a WarioWare fan. Moving on. No, it's fine. I, I think I got it like years ago and it's it's not great. But yeah, moving on. Ah. One Piece Unlimited World Red. Very solid One Piece game. I'm a huge fucking One Piece fan. 
Massive. Massive One Piece fan. Um, it bugs me that I don't have a single One Piece Warrior, uh, Pirate Warriors game. I'm like, what the hell is wrong with me? I need to get the new one because it's, it's they've recently added like a shitload of DLC to do with Wano and I am very on board with that. Hell, I've been buying into the card game. <laughs> I've got three decks of the card game um, that you may see as we're kind of doing the game tour uh, in a few, in uh, the game room tour in a few weeks. Yeah. Go play that. Go play that game. It's very solid. It's a lot of fun. Big fan. Mario Party 10. Um, I don't play Mario Party games. I find them boring. But the ability to play as Bowser, very cool. Big fan. Um, it makes me kind of want to get Bowser's inside story. Uh, moving on. Super Mario, uh, New Super Mario Bros. U and New Super Mario Bros. U and Super Luigi 2. I don't know why I own this one. It, it's literally just this game plus Super Luigi U. I just bought it because it was like a fiver. <laughs> These are fine platformers. They're fine. I, they're unfortunately as bog bloody standard as any 2D Mario platformer has ever been. They're kind of boring. <laughs> Scribble Arts Unlimited. Um, I don't own Unmasked. Specifically, I don't own the Australian version, which would play on a PAL, because it's PAL, it's, it's the PAL region, it would play on a PAL Wii U, and that slightly pisses me off, because I, I like this game, and the idea of having it with a bucket load of fucking DC characters, even cooler, but no, we can't have nice things in the UK, because of course we can't, moving on, Pikmin 3. I will be doing a Pikmin video at some point because a certain Pikmin game has caught my attention this year and I really like it. To be fair, I'm I'm currently debating on picking up Pik Hey Pikmin and uh, the new Play Plus version of Pikmin 1 for the Wii. I hated Pikmin 4. <laughs> Specifically the Wii version, the Wii U version. The Wii U version is the single worst way to play Pikmin. Ever. It is dreadful. It is borderline unplayable. It really is just full of suck. It's full of suck. From the ludicrous resource management that's just dreadful and I hated in I hated in Pikmin 1 I hated it in that bit in Pikmin 4 I just no no if you're gonna give me a Pikmin game make it a fucking collectathon like 2 and 4 do that that's better moving on I really cannot stand Pikmin 3 and we'll, we'll get to that when I when I do my video we're kind of in my top favorite games for the Wii U at the moment, which is nice. So we're going to start with Zombie U, kind of the major launch title, which is weird because it's an extremely slow paced single player sort of um, first person sh first person shooter survival game that's rated 18. This isn't really the game to sell the Wii U on, but it's a bloody good one. Mostly I go back and play its multiplayer. Because there's something fun about play. So the way the multiplayer works is you have the game pad and then someone has a pro controller. The pro controller allows people to just kind of shoot. Well, it's a first person shooter at that point and they've got control of the big TV. The game pad, however, they can spawn in zombies. And the point is to like capture points or prevent the zombies from capturing points or stuff like that. It's a lot of fun. It's really good fun. And the fact they removed it when they went, eh, yeah, we're going to port Zombie U to like the Xbox One and the PS4 and call it Zombie, and it's going to suck. Speaks volumes. If you're going to play Zombie, play Zombie U. Not hard. Plus, it's cheap as shit. Moving on. <coughs> this is one of two, three, three games um, I've bought the Switch versions of. The first is Pikmin 3, because... Pikmin 3 on the Wii U sucks like shit. The next is Hyrule Warriors. This is my favourite game on the system. Bar none. Bar any. Because it took the original format, or it took the Dynasty Warriors format, 
slapped on a shitload of Zelda paint and made it really, really, really fucking good. Like, none of the other Hyrule Warriors games or, like, Nintendo Warriors games they've released since have been as good. Even, even Three Hopes, and I loved Three Hopes. I do. It was one of my favourite games of last year. It's just, yeah... Like, nothing has topped Hyrule Warriors for me. This is the one I keep going back to. Largely so I can play as Volga. So, naturally, when it was like, oh, yes, it's being released on Switch, I bought it again, and I haven't put as much time into it. <laughs> um, maybe I should go do that. But, yeah, moving on. Token Tournament, including the Mewtwo Shadow Mewtwo card. That's an amiibo, believe it or not. It's kind of crazy. I don't know if the me I don't know if the Mewtwo amiibo works with it in quite the same way. But yeah, um, I like this game. It's basically just Tekken and Pokemon kind of shoved into a weird ass hybrid. That's a lot of fun. But I'll be honest with you: if you're gonna play it nowadays, play the Switch version. Just play the Switch version. This game's great. Um, it first released in arcades in Japan, uh, which pissed off a lot of people because they were like, we want to play on the Wii, we want to play on the Nintendo system. And then they bought it on the Wii U where it didn't sell very well. And then they went, oh, maybe we'll add some new fighters and release it on the Switch and it's considerably better. But yeah, good game, solid game, really cool. Transformers Prime. Um, I like the show. The show's really good. Um, I originally bought this game... 2014? Something like that? Yeah. This game came out in 2012, apparently, and I bought it in, like, 2014, 2015. It got shipped to my old house, and I never saw that copy again, which is fine when you're a student and 10 quid is a week's food shopping. But... Picked up eventually. It's pretty solid. Um, it's more of a fighting game, which is really bizarre. Um, actually, it's got more in common with Pokemon Tournament than it has anything else. But yeah, solid. You can probably play it in other places now, but this plan on Wii U. It's a good reason to own it. Super Mario 3D World. My favourite Mario game. My absolute favourite Mario game. Um, of all time. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a Mario guy. I saw the film, I thought it was great. I thought it was genuinely very good. I think it's probably the best adaptation we could have gotten of a Mario property, of the Mario property into, into another medium. But this is flat out my favorite Mario game. And it is one of those three games that I mentioned that I got on the Switch. I had to, because they added Bowser's insides. They added fucking, um, Bowser's Fury, which actually overtook the main game as my favourite Mario game. Um, because it's just that good. My wife and I played through it. Um, she got to play as uh, Bowser Jr. in his in his clown car, which she she really took to. Um, I'm not quite done. I know this video is quite long and it's going to be quite a bit longer yet because I've still got to get to the limited edition stuff. But Mass Effect 3. This is not the best way to play Mass Effect. The best way to play Mass Effect is the trilogy. But if you want a, if you've got a Wii U and you've got six quid, buy it. Smash Bros. Um, you can't get the DLC characters anymore, which is a little alarming for competitive. But to be brutally honest, and I know people will sh slay me for saying this, Ultimate is for. It's, it is 4. It is literally a port of 4 to the Switch with a good number of like mechanical changes that make it distinct. But there's a reason nobody talks about 4 anymore and that's because quite simply Ultimate is, is the same fucking game. Um, just not with a shit Mario Party clone as its main mode, which thanks for that. Final of the standard games, and quite frankly, one of the two games that made me want a Wii U in the first... Uh, one of three games, sorry, that made me want a Wii U in the first place. The first was Pikmin 3, before I knew better. The second was Wonderful 101, because that game looked amazing. And the third one was an arcade port 
of a game called Tank Tank Tank, where you just drive big tanks, shoot big dudes, and play as a giant monkey in one of the fucking multiplayer modes. And you know what? It is brutally good fun. It is stupid. It is insane. It is everything that I love about playing arcade games shoved onto one of my favourite consoles. Of course I'm going to fuck. Okay, we're now on to all of the limited edition stuff. Now, I was going to do a separate video on this, but I'm, I'm, I don't want to. I'm just going to kind of quickly go through them, give you my thoughts. Splatoon! Yes, um, I managed to get this despite the fact that the entire game-based shipment of the limited edition uh, version of the first Splatoon game was flat out fucking stolen. It was stolen from a fucking um, truck stop, which, uh, congratulations. Um, it's amazing you can lose something that large. <laughs> but yeah. Um, I played the shit out of this. I haven't out of two and three. Because, quite frankly, they're the same fucking game. Two at least added in a horde mode. Three is the same game as two. And I'm not wasting 30 to... F I'm not wasting, like, 50 quid on the same shit in game. Completely pointless. If you're going to play that, do so. Uh, oh yeah, as I said, I own two copies of Super Mario Maker. Um, this game's good. It's very solid. Um, I didn't play it too much. Um, my friend bought me this limited edition copy a couple years ago just because it was like £5 in a CEX. Um, and it's got like the book and everything that shows you how to make... Um, make different stuff and I'm a sucker for Wii U limited editions anyway so yeah Lego City Undercover um the only thing about this limited edition is it comes with a minifigure of the main character it's Lego GTA but you're not a criminal you're a cop so it's it's weird I've played it like twice you can play it on pretty much anything nowadays but Wii U first baby now, I talked about... I talked about this one. I talked about this one a few weeks ago. The flat-out worst... The flat-out worst Star Fox game that isn't... No, you know what? I'm going back on it. This is the worst Star Fox game. It is dreadful. It is terrible. I fucking hate it. I will never play it again. Guard, on the other hand, I may play. Because that game was actually, you know... You could fucking control it. I'm like... Fucking zero. Dreadful. Thank you for killing the Star Fox Rangers. Oh boy. Uh, this game I got out of a pound lamb for a fiver. <laughs> Amiibo Festival for Animal Crossing. Why do I own this? It was five quid. It came with two Amiibo. One of them's Isabel, who is a delight. Especially her friendship with Doom Guy. And yes, I know I am several years too late to the party. But that game is 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 all kinds of bad. It's all kinds of bad. So the fact it was a fiver in a charity shop. Uh, no, in a pound land. Um, I wasn't going to say no. That's two free of me. Sod it. I need that for uh, getting more items in, in Hyrule Warriors. Xenoblade Chronicles X. Which, uh, is, strangely enough, hasn't been ported to Switch. If there's a game on the Wii U that I thought would be ported to Switch, it would be this. This was almost the game that got me into JRPGs. And a big part of that is Big Sodding Mech. But I just can't do it. I just can't get past automated or turn-based combat. I can't. I've tried. I've beaten Cthulhu Saves the World. I, I know how a JRPG typically goes, but I just can't fucking do it even when they are slamming a giant mech in front of my face and going hey there's a big old open world that you can go explore couldn't fucking do it couldn't fucking do it i haven't even been back to that game since i finished it uh, i didn't even finish it since i finished playing it i just can't and that's a shame because i think it's probably the best of the xenoblade games that i played i played the first one i thought it was Nye. i haven't played two i don't want to play three but yeah Oh, Yuji Naka, why did you go and get yourself arrested for insider trading? Congratulations, creator of Sonic. Rodea the Sky Soldier. And for years, I could not get out of the habit of saying Sky Warrior, because I'm an idiot. This game is a kind of 
3D platformer which was being developed for the Wii and then didn't release for the Wii. So they were like, fine, look, we're desperate for exclusives. We'll give you a limited edition. You will not see people find this. Like, you, you can't. You cannot, like, you can find it for, like, cheap, but you will have a trouble finding it in the first place. Especially with the necklace. You will not find it with the necklace. Yes, it has the necklace. Yeah. Big fan. I'm not opening the box. Because it's a bitch to get everything back in there. But trust me, I have the necklace. Uh, last two. We're on the last two. Bayonetta. Bayonetta 2. Um, and Bayonetta 1. Multi-pack. I, um, I didn't buy the big old limited edition because I felt 100 quid at a time where I didn't have enough money for food. Might have been a bad idea. So instead I bought a double pack of probably one of my favourite games on the 360 and its beautiful sequel that is by far so much better than 3 because it doesn't have forced stealth sections. So to the creator of Bayonetta, if you're going to make a fourth game, remove that shit! Terrible. This last game isn't necessarily a physical release. It is a promotional box for Pokemon Rumble U that I used to store, well, A, the, the memory stick that's got Pokemon Rumble U in it, the few bits that came with it, like the additional collectible figure, limited edition Black Curium, and the fucking download code. And um, this box cost me 20 quid. For just the box. It didn't even come with the download code. <laughs> but I bought it because I was like, eh, I don't have that. I've seen it in game. Fuck it, why not? One final little thing before I go. Uh, just a little promotional thing for um, Smash Bros. U promoting the Amiibo side of things. The biggest smash ever hits Wii U. Just kind of fun. It really, really reminds... It really reminds me of Melee's manual. And that's why I keep it around. Because it's just a delight to kind of own. It's just nice. It's different. It, it's, it's a lot of fun. You've got all the side... You've got all the fucking smashes for, like, pretty much every major character that was in the initial launch. And you know what? It's just so nice to own. But yeah, that's it. That's the Wii U collection. Uh, this is coming up to an hour. Um, and if you've stuck around this long, thank you very much. Much appreciated. Um, next week, I'm not too sure what we're going to be doing, to be fair. I may do the room tour for 2014, uh, but we'll see. Um, I may do something else, because I think two absolutely gargantuan videos in, in one big go might be a bad idea. So uh, I mean, we looked at the we looked at that ST I got last week. That was nice. Um, that was just a short video. I'm still prattling on how long this is. Maybe we'll look at the NES. Maybe we'll look at um, maybe my top five 3DS games or something like that. We'll see. Because I did a top ten uh, 3D games recently. Maybe we'll do a pickups video. I don't know. Um, probably not before the end of the year because obviously Christmas. Um, I will do my Christmas special. That'll be fun. Um, but we'll see. Um, that will probably come out after Christmas. But whatever. Doesn't matter. Anyway, um, thank you for watching. Um, that is the full Wii U collection. Uh, big old, big old fucking video. You can see why I haven't done a GameCube one or an original Xbox one yet. We'll be here for hours. But yeah, that's it. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, that is me, signing off.